What's going on YouTube? This is the one and only Pop Culture Junkie here and I am here today to give you my predictions on the 2018 WWE Elimination Chamber pay-per-view slash network special only available on the WWE Network. Well, this Sunday is the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. It is a Raw exclusive pay-per-view. Raw brand only, so no SmackDown superstars, only Raw. That means we're going to have the Elimination Chamber match itself, but hey, guess what? This time we have two Elimination Chamber matches taking place. One men's, one women's. That's right, for the first time ever, they will be having the women's Elimination Chamber match. And this will be for the women's Raw Championship title belt. That's right, we're going to get a women's title match inside an Elimination Chamber. So it should be great. should be a fun pay-per-view. we got two big major matches there. We still have two additional matches also already advertised, and that is Bray Wyatt versus Woken Matt Hardy. And then we have the undefeated Asuka and 2018 Royal Rumble winner, Asuka, Empress of Tomorrow versus Nia Jax. And in that match, if Nia Jax wins, she will be inserted into the WrestleMania women's title match, making it a triple threat match. Before we get to the predictions of the card, let me take you back just past week on Raw. We were given a special treat for a show on Raw this week. The first two hours of the three-hour show was one solid match. That's right, we had a gauntlet match consisting of the seven superstars that would be participating in the men's elimination chamber match. We had those seven competitors in a gauntlet match. Now, if you're not familiar with what a gauntlet match is, that is where you take two of the competitors and have them have a match. The winner stays in the ring. The loser goes to the back. We get another competitor come out and they fight and the winner stays in the ring and the loser goes back. So you keep going until all the seven have been in the ring and whoever is the last person to win the last match, they are the winner of the actual gauntlet match. So the match went. We had Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins start. Seth Rollins got the victory and won over Roman Reigns clean on Monday Night Raw. Unbelievable, right? Well, John Cena was his next opponent. And guess what? Seth Rollins won that one too. Unbelievable. He beat Roman and Cena back to back. Roman and Cena go to the back. Next we have Elias. Elias though, Rollins was easy pickings by then. And therefore, Elias got the victory and the pinfall. Then we had Finn Balor come out and Balor defeated Elias. So Elias went to the back and Finn stayed. Then we have The Miz come out with The Miz Taraj and with lots of interference was able to pin and beat Finn Balor. Therefore, The Miz was the winner. Then here comes Braun. And Braun comes out and squashes The Miz, beats up all The Miz Taraj, and he is the winner of the actual gauntlet match. But if you were to look at this as actual individual matches, the Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins match was good. I'll say good. The John Cena, Seth Rollins match was amazing. Very good. Lots of great back and forth. Lots of good action. Uh, lots of kickouts. You didn't know who was going to win. I mean, really, I was expecting John Cena to win. Of course, right? It's John Cena, so he's going to win. Seth Rollins has been saddled with the Jason Jordan tag team match uh, with dealing with Kurt Angle as Jordan's father and all this stuff. Seth Rollins should be a singles superstar, and he has been a superstar already. He's been the world champion. He's been the main guy on Raw. When he came back from injury, he got saddled with a bunch of stuff that he shouldn't have been, including this past you know few months as Jordan's tag partner. But on this night, they brought him back into the spotlight, and I hope that's leading into some good stuff for this weekend's pay-per-view. Overall, the Raw was good. The gauntlet match was great. We had only another uh, couple matches on the show. Unfortunately, we were given a six women's tag match as the main event for the night, and it just did not hold up. It couldn't really follow the gauntlet match. I mean, the gauntlet match itself was entertaining uh, from beginning to end, had its moments, but the six women's tag, it just did not hold up, and it was not the best way to sell the first ever Elimination Chamber match that we had coming up this, this weekend. So that was Monday Night Raw. This is Sunday now, coming upon Elimination Chamber. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's Thursday night that I'm recording this, they have only advertised four matches, plus Ronda Rousey will be signing her Raw contract to be a Raw exclusive wrestler on the show. And they're doing this, of course, because the pay-per-view is being held in Las Vegas. So, first of all, we'll, we'll address that, okay? The Ronda Rousey contract signing. I don't exactly understand why Ronda Rousey is signing with Raw when we already have Brock Lesnar as the part-timer who's a who's the champion. He's the universal champion right now. To me, it doesn't make any sense, especially if you're going to have Ronda Rousey come in 
and eventually win the women's title, she's going to, what, do the same thing? She's going to win the championship belt and disappear for a couple months, show up every once in a while, and then disappear, show up and disappear. Just, you know, it makes no sense. It, you need a champion to be there on the show, to be there on Raw, not just stand behind a mouthpiece like Brock's been doing for the past couple years. You actually need to have a champion come out, cut promos their, themselves, and defend the title on Raw as well as network specials, not just on random network specials, okay? Uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense. We don't even have Brock Lesnar at Elimination Chamber. Like, he has not been advertised, and I doubt he's going to show up. There's no real reason for him to. The winner of the Men's Elimination Chamber match gets to face Lesnar at WrestleMania, but there's no reason for Lesnar to be there because, you know, he's not going to fly all the way out there just to stand there and be like, okay, so I'm fighting you, okay. And they're not going to, you know, risk one of his appearances just for that, I don't think. So we're not going to see Brock Lesnar, the Universal Champ, at the Raw pay-per-view, which makes no sense. So again, I don't know why they're signing Ronda to Raw. I think she'd be much more useful on SmackDown, and she would be better fit there, and it would give them a lot more attention. So the contract signing itself, I'm not exactly sure if there's going to be anything else to it except Ronda coming out. I'm sure it'll be Kurt Angle just giving a speech, and then Ronda will come out. I could see possibly somebody from the women's division coming out to confront her. Uh, I don't think it'll be Asuka. It might be somebody like, say, Mandy Rose or Sonya Deville. You know, somebody that's a heel uh, to kind of get in her face and be like, hey, who do you think you are? Maybe then, you know, Ronda will get to, you know, get a couple of hits in or trap them into an arm bar or something just to show off that she's, you know, legit. And that's going to be about it. I don't think anything else is going to come with this. So the first match we're looking at here is the Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. Okay, this rivalry has not worked at all. And it could have gone really well. Okay, you have two very talented individuals, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt alone, we've talked about this many times. I'm not going to go on and on about it again because everyone, I think, has been well aware of my opinions. Bray Wyatt is one of the most underrated and underused characters that they've ever had. Okay, I don't know how they messed up his character so easily. You know, based on how they've handled Bray Wyatt, his character, and the Wyatt family and whatnot, it really makes me wonder, what would it be like if they had had The Undertaker's character debut just within the last few years like Bray Wyatt did? How badly misused and misbooked would he have been? Okay, Undertaker is a legend. His character is just amazing, of course, and legendary... He's had legendary matches and feuds all the way back from 1990 when he debuted up until now. So, But it makes you wonder, okay? His character was a mysterious character that relied on spooky powers and whatnot. And Bray Wyatt was the same. We still don't really know anything about his character. Is he a cult leader? It seemed like that's the direction they were going in. And then they kind of got a little scared about having a cult thing on their show. So they kind of pulled back on it. I think the Wyatt family should have just been an unstoppable click they should have been a, a group that just you know destroys anybody they face whether it's in a tag team or six-man tag matches whatever i definitely think bray wyatt should have had a couple of championship runs or at least one long solid championship run unlike how they used him last year and finally giving him the world title only to lose it a month later to randy orton which made no sense whatsoever anyways <laughs> so uh, the Woken gimmick. This, of course, is the broken Matt Hardy gimmick that, you know, was very successful in another company, but WWE had to put their spin on it, and they've really watered it down. It, it has not worked. It has not clicked. And, unfortunately, they waited until Jeff Hardy was injured, and they had to have Matt Hardy do a singles run. But, again, it does not work. It has not made any sense. This match right here, I don't even care who wins. I do believe it should be Bray Wyatt that goes over in this and hopefully gets back into the title picture and actually wins some titles. Okay, our next match, we have the Empress of Tomorrow, the 2018 Women's Royal Rumble winner, Asuka, versus Nia Jax. And if Nia Jax wins this match and defeats Asuka finally, then she will be added to the Women's Raw Women's title match at WrestleMania in a triple threat. First of all, this makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because Asuka has still not said who she is challenging for the title. That's right. She has not said once who she wants to challenge for the title. At Rumble, she was going to be able to do that, but she got interrupted by Ronda Rousey. So we don't know. Is she challenging Charlotte? Is she challenging Alexa? We don't know. But apparently, they're already assuming it's going to be the Raw Women's Champ that she's going to challenge by this stipulation being added to this match where all of a sudden... 
even though you won the Rumble, Asuka, Nia Jax, who was not even one of the final few in the Rumble itself, if she beats you, then she automatically gets to be in the title picture. It makes no sense. This should not be a stipulation at all. Just make it a stipulation. If you want to, you know what? If you want to make it a stipulation, fine. If Nia wins, then Asuka loses her title shot, even though that makes no sense. It was the first ever women's rumble. Let the winner just go on to face the champion at Mania. You messed it up already with the Money in the Bank. When you had the women's Money in the Bank match, you had James Ellsworth get the briefcase for Carmella. You had to get a man to do it for a woman, okay? Horrible decision, horrible booking. You had to redo the ladder match two nights later on SmackDown because you got so much hate. So it made no sense whatsoever to add this stipulation. Just let Asuka win the Rumble and then go on to WrestleMania and challenge for the title. If you want to do this kind of gimmick for the women's match later on in a couple years after you've done the Rumble for a few times, fine. We've had moments like that in the men's Rumble where a winner wins the match. Let's say, okay, Vince McMahon, he won the 1999 Royal Rumble, but then fought Stone Cold, and Stone Cold won the right to go to WrestleMania 15 and, and challenge The Rock for the title. Royal Rumble 2000. Big Show was the winner of the Royal Rumble. Yes, look it up. The Rock is given credit for it, but his feet touched the ground, and Big Show was actually the last person in the ring. So Big Show should have been challenging Triple H for the title at WrestleMania. They originally were going to have Triple H versus The Rock anyways, but they didn't believe Triple H could be a headliner and headline WrestleMania yet. That's why we had that fatal four-way with Big Show and Mankind and Triple H and The Rock. Okay? Anyways, they still, they did that. But this is after 12 years of Rumble. Don't do this with the first women's Rumble. It makes no sense and it takes a lot away from it. Now my prediction for this match is Asuka is going to stay undefeated. She's going to make Nia Jax tap out with the armbar. Then she will go to WrestleMania and challenge whoever wins the women's Elimination Chamber match. Which, that brings us to that. So we have the women's first ever Elimination Chamber match for the Raw women's title. Alexa Bliss versus Bayley versus Mandy Rose versus Mickie James versus Sasha Banks versus Sonya Deville. Now we have Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose as part of Absolution, Abstraction, whatever that group is called, okay? The Page Stable, okay? We have those two from that stable. That stable should already be abolished and gotten rid of because Paige can't wrestle anymore, unfortunately. She is injured. It's It's been announced that she is injured. They have yet to announce it on the show that she will no longer be able to wrestle. But so far, that's the, that's the word. Everywhere you look it up, that's the rumor. That's the solid word is that Paige is done as far as an in-ring competitor for the foreseeable future. That's unfortunate and really sad because she has a lot of potential and she can really put on some good matches. She's a great talker. She's got the, the total package to be a really good women's wrestler. Unfortunately, she is not able to wrestle anymore and that's sad, but in that case, she does not even need to be near the ring, okay? Look at the last few weeks on Raw whenever Mandy Rose and DeVille are attacking or jumping other women. Paige is on the outside of the ring cheering her on even though... You know, you would think, oh, just get in the ring at least. Nope, she can't even do that. She can't get near any action because, of course, they're worried. Any little mistiming could, you know, cause further injury, and that is bad publicity for WWE. So there you go. Now, the other four women in this match, Mickey James, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Alexa Bliss, they should definitely put on a really good match. I'm not taking anything away from Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. I'm, I'm sure they're going to do their best to put on a good match, but you have four women that have been around for a lot longer, have put in a lot more matches, and they've been in a lot more different types of matches, not just your singles matches. So I definitely see Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss and Bailey and Mickey James really putting in the effort to make this a really awesome first ever women's elimination chamber match. So who's my pick for the victory? I'm going to say I'm looking at Sasha Banks winning and then it'll be Sasha versus Asuka for the title. Because you have a chance to make a good story there. Okay, Sasha Banks has already been defeated by Asuka on Raw. But if now Sasha is the champ, she's got a lot more to prove. And you could really make some good promo segments with Sasha. Uh, Asuka does not need to talk anymore, by the way. Okay, if you saw Raw, I don't think Asuka should talk. I don't think she should say anything except no one is ready for Asuka. That should be the only English she speaks. Everything else, I think she should just be speaking her, her native tongue. 
and just look menacing and scary like she does anyways. She's hot, but she's scary at the same time with the way she does her facial expressions. And I think that says a lot more than anything she's going to try to speak in English. Just my opinion. There. But I think it's going to be Sasha Banks winning the title. Uh, for whatever reason, they have not had Alexa Bliss defend the women's title in months. And it used to be, after 30 days, you get the title stripped off you if you don't defend that title. And she hasn't defended the title at all. I don't even know how much she's been wrestling at, like, house shows and whatnot. But she hasn't hardly wrestled on Raw either. So I don't know if there's a connection there. We'll see. It's really going to depend on just how much she does in the chamber itself. Everyone remember back to 2003 when they had the second Elimination Chamber? And it was basically all of Evolution, Triple H, and Randy Orton... And uh, we had, what, Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, Jericho, and Goldberg. They were in the in the match. Triple H hardly did anything in the match because he was injured. He had his legs taped up. Uh, he had to wear those long trunks that he doesn't usually wear uh, because his thighs were all taped up and whatnot. Uh, remember that? Okay, he was injured. He could hardly do anything. And that's why they had to do so much of the work uh, everyone else did. And Triple H just, you know, got the pinfall to, to win. So my pick is going to be Sasha Banks. I'd like to see Alexa keep the belt and then have Asuka defeat somebody that's been champion for a while. But I think it's going to be Sasha Banks. So that brings us to the men's Elimination Chamber match. The winner gets to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34. In this match, we have Braun Strowman versus Elias versus Finn Balor versus John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins versus The Miz, the Intercontinental Champion, The Miz, that is. Now, we got to see some really great buildup on Raw for this matchup. Okay, we had the seven-man gauntlet match. Based on the events we saw on Raw, there's a lot of directions that this could go. Okay, we could see a lot of different outcomes uh, the obvious outcome, of course, that everyone's expecting is Roman Reigns to win and go on to face Brock and defeat him at Mania for the belt. Honestly, that's been the plan since last year's WrestleMania when Goldberg lost the belt to Brock. It was like, okay, we know one year from now it's going to be Roman Reigns. They're going to spend the next year doing everything they can to get Roman into that title picture and make it to where the fans will cheer for him winning it. Not only just in the match but cheer for him afterwards now something i'd like to see is i want to see elias bring his guitar with him into the pod and be playing random songs during the match or at random times just to egg on the other opponents uh i definitely think that'd be entertaining and i want to see something like that now uh as far as it's going to be seven men in this match so you're going to have four guys in the pod and probably three start the match okay i'm not sure what three are starting it but You'll probably have three in the ring and then four in each, you know, one in each pod. I don't think anybody's going to be eliminated until all seven competitors are in the ring. But I would like to see a surprise where we get either Roman or John Cena are the first one eliminated. I'd like to see that as a major shocker to really get people to go, whoa, something's happening here, okay? Because they're, especially if it's Roman, if they do that, I would be very impressed because honestly, WWE has done some things in the past uh, few months where it's been a very good twist or, tw or swerve and we've expected one way or one result and then something else happens. So I'd like to see that again. I'd like to see them bring us to the show expecting, oh, okay, the fans are going to think we just want Roman to win. And then in, they just surprise us with a, a Seth Rollins win or a Finn Balor win, whatever. Now, my pick, honestly, I think they need to go with Seth Rollins. He had such a standout performance on Raw that really built him back up as a singles competitor, and I think it would do even better to have him go straight on to Mania and challenge Brock one-on-one -on -one for the title. There's also a rumor going around that there may be a chance of them doing a triple threat match with Rollins versus Reigns versus Lesnar, but I don't think we need to see that. We already had that once with the cash-in where Rollins won the title, but I don't believe we need to see that, and the reason is... Once again, you're going to give Brock Lesnar a easy out to drop a belt without getting pinned. Because I think if you have a triple threat, you're going to have one of two things happen. You're going to have Rollins pin Roman or Roman pin Rollins. And that's it. You're not going to have Lesnar go over. Okay, I think no matter what, Lesnar's dropping the title. I do not see him retaining the title at Mania. And I think the smart money would be Rollins wins, pins Lesnar, goes on to have an amazing run as champ. You already have Finn Balor with Gallows and Anderson, and I think they should be a major heel group, and you could have Finn Balor and Rollins feuding over the title leading into the summer. I think that would be even better, a lot better than having Roman Reigns, okay? Uh, we just need to get Roman Reigns away from it. I thought we were going to win away with him uh, from the title picture when he was Intercontinental Champion, but of course, that wasn't anything. That was just to try to get the fans to like him again. So, my pick is uh, the smart money would be Rollins winning the 
Elimination Chamber match and going on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So there we have it. There's my predictions for Elimination Chamber coming up this Sunday on WWE Network. Now, uh, I did ask some people on Twitter if uh, you had any questions or topics that you want me to address in this video. And I did have one reply here. So I have uh, Samantha. She says, do you think Asuka will be defeated by Nia Jax at Elimination Chamber? I don't think so. I don't think Asuka is going to lose. I don't think you could have her lose a match before she wins the title. I think she needs to stay undefeated, win the title at WrestleMania, and then you need a real legit challenger to beat Asuka. Or you need a insanely good twist surprise something to where Asuka loses in controversial fashion and has an insane feud with somebody over the next months, many, many months. They can't do Goldberg, Kevin Nash, Starcade 98 because we saw what happened. Goldberg got screwed out of his championship and got his first loss by Scott Hall interfering with the cattle prod and whatnot. But what did that really do? It really killed WWE's momentum, you know, and, and I get that WWE is not riding on Asuka for their momentum, okay? They're riding on a few people, not just her, a few people, but I don't think that's going to do her any favors by having her getting screwed over in that kind of fashion. But I think there just needs to be some kind of really big swerve twist to when she does actually finally lose a match. Uh, but it, I don't think it needs to be before Mania. It needs to be after she's been champion. Okay, well, Samantha, thank you for your question. And anyone else out there, if you ever want to ask me questions or uh, bring up something you want me to talk about on these uh, prediction videos, uh, always hit me up on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at PopCultureJunk2. Uh, all my links are always in the below in the uh, description of every video. Okay, well, hey, everyone out there that's going to be watching the show, I hope you enjoy it. Remember, I'll be live tweeting all throughout the show like I do with every WWE Network special, whether it's a NXT TakeOver show, whether it's a Raw or SmackDown brand show, which we're not going to have Raw and SmackDown brand shows for too much longer since they're starting to put those back together again, if you haven't seen the uh, latest news on that. So yeah, uh, check me out on Twitter if you want to talk about the uh, show on Sunday as we're watching it. Okay, guys and gals, well, I hope you enjoyed the show. hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you later. This is the Pop Culture Junkie. Signing out.